All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to be here. Okay, so we started a whiskey distillery here in town, and we started a whiskey distillery in a pretty inadvisable way. So our business model, it doesn't make a lot of sense from traditional business principles. It's not appealing to venture capitalists. Our fellow alcohol companies think we're pretty silly. But I'm going to try to convince you today that we're going to be just fine in spite of all this. That, in fact, we're going to be very successful, as successful we've proven ourselves uh, since we opened a couple years ago. So how many of you drink whiskey? And, you know, you're being videoed. Don't, <laughs> don't get me in trouble with the administration. I don't need that. Adam, we know your mom's in the audience. You, there were some hands. Yeah. Anyone of you drinking rye whiskey? Yeah, all right. Okay, so if you go into a Pennsylvania state store, Pennsylvania is run by state store system. Pennsylvania is the largest single alcohol purchaser in the country. If you go into a Pennsylvania state store, this is pretty much your shelf set when it comes to rye whiskey, uh, plus or minus a couple bottles, maybe depending on the store you're in. Is anyone, any of you who are drinking rye whiskey, are you drinking any of these brands? Yeah, okay, what, what are you drinking? Which one? Bullet? Knob Creek? Templeton. Okay, Bullet, any idea where your whiskeys are made? Kentucky? You think Bullet, Kentucky? Kentucky? Kentucky, okay. All right, all right, so <laughs> turns out that the first three of those brands are all produced at the same place, this place called MGP. That stands for Midwest Grain Products. It's in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. MGP is the largest distillery in the United States. They make whiskey, they make vodka, they make fuel, they make bioplastics. <laughs> um, and it <laughs> So to give you some perspective, um, on the scale of MGP. At our distillery in the Strip District, we are really proud of the number of barrels that we are socking away. We are up to about 450 barrels. MGP comfortably houses 400,000 barrels of whiskey at their facility. Okay, so it turns out that last year, nearly half of the whiskey, of the rye whiskey sold in Pennsylvania was produced by MGP. The other, so these are some of the brands um, that purchase MGP's rye whiskey. You might be familiar with these. So all of these companies are buying this rye whiskey, this one recipe that MGP makes, um, that's produced with the same grains, in the same facility, by the same people, under the same conditions. And these companies are buying that whiskey and then rebottling it and labeling it as a variety of different brands. Right? So what's really interesting about this slide is um, there are big names on this slide, but there are a lot of little names on this slide too. Labels that suggest that these are craft whiskeys, right? That give you the sense that there's a couple of guys toiling away in small batches, making this stuff with tender loving care, when in fact this is bulk whiskey produced by industrial stills. Okay, so that's half of Pennsylvania's rye whiskey supply, MGP. The other half is produced by a distiller you've probably heard of, that's Beam Incorporated. They similarly, as far as any spirits writer knows, they have uh, one rye whiskey recipe um, that they also bottle under a variety of different labels. Um, so the upshot to this, in case you've <laughs> missed it, Amer America makes two rye whiskeys right now. Dozens and dozens of brands. You have two options in rye whiskey right now in America. Okay, so why is this the case? Are there Tepper students in the room? Yeah, all right. There's some in the back, of course. <laughs> um, so it's like all the engineers are right here, right? Okay, so um, this is simply driven by economics, right? Purely economic. So this is an email we got from this company called Ultra Pure. They're a distributor of this bulk whiskey, of this MGP whiskey. 
they are offering to sell us in this email this MGP rye whiskey for $2.75 a bottle. You can see, we can, we can buy anything from them. We could get bourbon from them. We get blended whiskey. They're out of Tennessee bourbon, unfortunately. Um, maybe next year. Uh, $2.75 a bottle. So when you're buying Bullet, you're paying $27 a bottle for that $2.75 bottle of whiskey. Um, when you're buying Templeton, you're paying $45 for that $2.75 bottle of whiskey. To give you some perspective on our costs, $2.75 is what we spend per bottle on just the barrel that we use to house the whiskey. Not even talking about what we're putting into that barrel. So this is a really good deal, right? This is like the deal of the century. There's a lot of room to move between $2.75 and $45, right? That's a nice margin. Right, Tepper guides? Yeah, nice margin. <laughs> Everyone's like, we're going to the whiskey business. Um, that margin is built entirely on consumer confusion, right? So when we started Wiggle, we decided that this whole model is untenable. It's just unsustainable. We wanted to start a distillery based entirely on transparency. So that gets us to our number one operating principle at Wiggle Whiskey, and that is our business is only as sustainable as our consumers are educated and engaged. Um, so, you know, you can think about other industries right now maybe that profit from consumer confusion, right? Maybe the credit industry, maybe the healthcare industry, right? We want to move to a higher level <laughs> than that. Okay, so in that vein, I'm going to tell you how we make whiskey. We're a grain to bottle whiskey distillery, which means we make everything from scratch at our distillery. And what we're trying to do when we're doing this is make a Pittsburgh whiskey. Our whiskey should taste like Pittsburgh. <laughs> it should taste like the grains we grow here, it should taste like the crazy climate that we experience here. It should taste like the philosophies of our farmers and our distillers here. And this is not such a wild idea because as Adam mentioned, Pittsburgh was the birthplace of American whiskey. If we were sitting in this room in the 17 or 1800s, I wouldn't have to tell you any of this because you would have been making whiskey. At the height of whiskey making here in Pittsburgh, there were 4,000 documented whiskey stills. 4,000, each producing their own version of rye whiskey. Compare that to two rye whiskeys made in America. It's a pretty different landscape, right? Okay, so we're not in the 17 or 1800s. You don't know how to make whiskey, right? So we're gonna go through it real quick. Okay, so we start with local ingredients. We use local grains, they're heirloom grains, they're not that modified stuff that you'll see in the post-natural museum. <laughs> um, we get the farmers deliver them directly to our distillery so that we can mill them right the same day we start a batch. Um, and then we mix the grains, that flour that we've made with warm water and yeast and ferment it into beer. And then we distill that beer in this machine, this is a copper pot. This is a pot still. This machine is pretty different than the kind of machine that a place like MGP is using. They're using what's called a continuous still. It's a wee bit bigger than this. Um, and it's fully automated to run whiskey through 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A continuous still is built for efficiency and consistency. These are things we are not good at at Wiggle Whiskey. The reason you use a still like this is because you want nuance and depth of flavor. It's expensive, it's not scalable, it's inefficient in nearly every regard. It requires human beings to operate it, but you get really nice flavors. Um, okay, and then once we've distilled our whiskey, we put it into a barrels and it just hangs out. It hangs out for so, so long. 
we have about two and a half million dollars worth of whiskey hanging out at the distillery right now that we will not touch for years. And now you see why it makes a lot of sense to buy that $2 bottle of whiskey, right? We're making this really hard for ourselves because you don't really care yet, right? <laughs> that you're paying $45 for a $2 bottle of whiskey. Why are we bothering with all of this? Okay, we're making it hard for ourselves. I'm gonna make it even harder. Okay, so liquor companies, they're really good at distribution, right? They've got huge distribution channels. Diageo, which owns a lot of the brands we've been talking about, including Bullet, um, they are distributed in 180 of the 196 countries that occupy our world. They are just 16 countries away from complete global domination. <laughs> this excites the Tepper guys, yeah? Um, okay, we decided to go a different route. We decided to focus on one country, the United States, one state, Pennsylvania, one city, Pittsburgh, one neighborhood, the Strip District, and one retail location, the distillery. So we worked for two years to lobby, to change a law to, that would allow us to sell directly to consumers. At the same time we were lobbying, we started building out a space, expecting, hoping that we would be successful. So once the law went into effect, we were able to open our distillery in the Strip District, um, which is a place that is open seven days a week, a place that you can come and see anytime we are open exactly what we are doing and what we are making and how we are making what you're drinking. Um, it's built as a community gathering spot to be open to even those that might not be ardent whiskey drinkers right now. This is um, my favorite picture of the distillery. This is uh, the women's spirit group from the Unitarian Church up the street from here <laughs> meeting in the distillery. This is like not a group you'd expect to see at Jack Daniels, right? We are really glad to have them at the distillery. Um, we not only want you to come and see what we're doing, we want you to be a part of the process. So our consumers help us build our products. Our consumers are involved from concept development to the final production of all the products we make. And this includes what's happening in this photo is a labeling party, which we have every single week at the distillery. Um, this is where people just like you, over 21, people just like you, come, we feed them cocktails, they put labels on the bottles, which is why the labels are crooked. <laughs> um, again, it's our way of inviting people into this process. Our goal is to make Pittsburgh the most educated spirits market in the world. Our goal is to transform the spirits industry from one that profits from consumer confusion to one that grows with consumer knowledge. We hope you'll join us. <laughs>